Well, hey, I want to jump straight into the Word of God today. I'm ready to go week two of the Evidence Series. Anybody ready for God's Word? Amen. Come on. All righty. You're going to go watch the Super Bowl later today, and you're going to shout. You're going to lose your voice. People are going to be painting their body all weird, like, wow! But let's not be quiet in the house of God. Can we start it right here today? How many know the party starts right here on game day Sunday? Amen. So if you got your Bibles, turn with me real quick to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. And then I want you to put a bookmark in uh, Hebrews chapter 12. 2 Timothy 4 and Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm going to get there in just a moment. While you're turning there, here's some fun Super Bowl facts for you today. What's happening today? We got 1.3 billion wings are going to be eaten today. Come on. How many love some good wings? Where you at? How many like some good lemon pepper wings, right? Anybody who says lemon pepper, you don't know how to make a good wing. It's got to be lemon pepper. Am I right? Let's go. Today, over 10 million pounds of ribs are going to be cooked. Where's my BBQ fans in the house? Yeah? Good barbecue. Here's something amazing. 11.2 million pounds of chips will be consumed today. Some good old chips. How many love the H-E-B? Amen. Here's something incredible. <laughs> I think we won't shout on this one. 139 million pounds of avocado are going to be in today. Where's my guac people in the house? Can yeah. Love some good old guac, all right? It's going to be good. But we're going to have fun today. If you shout me down, I'll preach quick so you can get to H-E-B because we know you ain't been there yet to get ready for the game tonight. You can beat the crowd, and we'll have some fun today. Amen all that? It's going to be good. Week, week two of the Evidence Series. How many enjoyed Pastor Daniel's message last week? You enjoy it? If you missed it, go back online and make sure you catch it. But we're going to jump in today. I didn't tell you to turn there, but I want to set this whole message up with a scripture. In Matthew 25, verse 21, it's going to be on the screen in front of you. I encourage you to take notes on your phone today. I believe God is going to speak to you in an incredible way and I've actually been meditating on this verse all 21 days of prayer and fasting, and, and I can't stop thinking about it. And really, Lord, just kind of led it to be a message here today for game day Sunday. But Matthew 25, verse 21. If you're ready, let me hear you go, yeah. yeah. Here we go. Notice the heart of God. The master, talking about the Lord, he was full of praise. It's filled his heart with joy. And I love this. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done, my good and faithful servant. If you're taking notes here today, here's the time of my message, and we're going to pray, and we're going to jump in, we're going to get it. Here we go. I will finish. Come on. Shout it again. Shout, I, I will, will finish. finish. Come on. How many know it's not how you start, but it's how you finish? Can I get an amen all that, right? How many know we serve a God who's a God of a comeback, right? We serve a God no matter where it is right now. He will not only help you finish, but the Bible says he goes from glory to glory and from greater to greater. I don't know about you, but I don't want to get to the end of my life and be like, uh, it was okay. I want to hear, well done. And I want to finish strong. Let's pray. Jesus, do your thing. Amen. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, one more time. Put your hands together for God's word. Let's go. I'm ready. So I've been thinking about this, this statement, well done, my good and faithful servant. And I know that it's game day Sunday. It's the biggest game of the year, the Super Bowl. It's their last game of the year. For many athletes, it's some of them, not many, but maybe some of them, it's their last game in their career. They've worked hard to get to this point. And I know this, both teams, they're going to want to get at the end of this game, and here's what they're going to want to hear, whether it's win or loss. They want to hear, well done. In other words, what we say in the, in the avenue of sports is we love to say, leave it all on the field. In other words, you don't want to walk off the field and wish you'd have done this and wish you'd have done that and you tried this. You want to give it everything you got, win or loss, to say, hey, well done. You were faithful and you finished. I don't know about y'all, how many want to leave your life when you enter heaven, you don't want to be like, man, I wish I tried that. I wish I tried that. But you want to be able to hear, I finished strong. And I left everything on the field in this game called life. Now, I haven't quite clicked 50 yet. 
You know, I'm 41, 42. I always forget my age. My wife, 40, 42. There it is, right there. My wife always reminds me. Come on, how many thankful for an awesome wife? Amen. <laughs> Been married coming up on almost 19 years, and I still can't remember my age. Oh, come on. You can celebrate that. Let's go. It's almost Valentine's Day, 19 years. Woo! It's great. But I think about this, and haven't quite clicked 50 yet, but all I can, all I can think about lately, I don't know why, and I pray that it hits your heart, is there's nothing more that I want to do than when I get to heaven, and I hear the Lord say, Brandon, well done, my good and faithful servant. I want to be able to tell my children that I finished well. I want to be able to tell my wife that I finished well. I want to be able to live a legacy that my ceiling is my children's floor. I want to be able to say and hear the Lord say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Brandon, you finished well. How many people want to finish well? Come on, I got anybody in the house. I can't stop thinking about it. And I did a little bit of a research in the Bible and a study the, the, the Bible has about a thousand leaders that were either mentioned or referenced or named from the Old Testament to the New Testament, from patriarchs to priests, military leaders, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and pastors. And here's the sad stat that I discovered out of the thousand known leaders and heroes in the Bible, only 30% finished well. And I began, one, the first thought in my mind was, I'm not going to be the 70%. I'm going to be the 30% that finished well. But then the pastor side of me and just loving to help people, the other side of me thought that, what am I going to do to help the other 70? If 70% of my family is not going to finish well, 70% of my friends are not going to finish well, 70% of my neighbors are going to finish well, what am I doing to help them know that their life is not over, Jesus is still in the middle of it, you may not think you can finish, but I promise you, God says you can finish well. You can finish strong. And I'm doing everything I got, I hope you hear my heart today. To speak to the 70% because I believe you can finish and you will finish strong. I thought about some heroes in my life. I thought about my 98-year-old granny. Come on. How many love a good praying grandmama? Am I right? How many had a praying grandmama? Come on. She can make some sweet potato pie and pray in the Holy Ghost at the same time. That's a praying grandmama. And she, she's been such an inspiration in my life. She's 98 years old. And I don't know how she did it, but at 90 years old, she still convinced them to get her a driver's license. <laughs> True story. But she only wanted to drive 2.1 miles to the local Starbucks at 5.30 every morning. And she wanted a Starbucks, but she's an evangelist. She wanted to make sure that she could witness Jesus to every single person that was an employee at Starbucks. And she did. She got every person saved. Come on. 98 years old. Granny is a hero of mine. And she'll call me every now and then and give me like a little prophetic word and it will last like 15 or 20 seconds and boom, she'll hang up. <laughs> and she'll like, hey baby, hey Brandon, the Lord gave me a word for you today. Da -da 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 -da. Love you, click. <laughs> and that's all I really needed to hear. But I, I think about it, I'm like, 98 years old, like, well done. Good and faithful servant. She was a leader. I mean, nobody walked up into her house that didn't get saved filled with the Holy Ghost, and get a miracle if you need a miracle happening. I mean, I saw it happen left and right. She actually told me, she said, honey, I'm 98 years old. I can't do nothing, but I can still pray. And she said, hey, just want you to know that, did you know Brandon? She told me, the Lord gave me my guardian angel's name. I know his name. And guess what? The Bible says you can pray and send out ministering angels. So me and him just tag team every day. We pray for you, and I send them to help you. I'm like, come on, Granny. Granny's amazing, but I just know at her funeral, we're going to be able to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Here's a scripture I want to show you that I first turned you to, uh, told you to turn to, 2 Timothy 4, 7. It says this. I think it speaks to today, and I almost broke this down to preach this direction, but I feel like the Holy Spirit told me to lead another way, but I think it's a foundation verse on how to finish well. Because it speaks from the end in mind. Second uh, Timothy 4, verse 7, it says this. I have fought the good faith. I have finished the race. And I have kept 
the faith. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And I have kept the faith. Can I tell you, friends, if you're taking notes, here's what I want you to realize. When it comes to life and living this life that God has blessed you with, number one is that you will fight. There's going to be days you wake up and you got to fight for the joy that God brought you. You've been believing for it. You've been uh, believing God for the hope to be, to resurrect in your heart again. Can I tell you, there's going to be days where you wake up and you get a text you weren't expecting. You get a phone call you weren't looking for. You get some news that wasn't happening and you can choose to let it destroy you or you can choose to hold on to the hope and the joy that Jesus has given you and you're going to fight for the joy because you're going to finish well and you're going to finish strong. You will fight. Just get ready. When you say yes to Jesus, it don't get easier, but you are built for the fight. Because the devil said he came to steal, kill, and destroy. He's going to do everything to let you know he's coming after you. Because you let him know that hell is not for you, but heaven is for you. And the moment you say that, buckle up, baby. Get ready to fight. But it's in you. It's in you. You will fight. You got to understand, you will run. You will run. And tell you right now, I hope you know, I do not like to run long distance. Come on, can I get an amen in the house? If you like to run marathons, God bless you. That is not me. This is why I like the game of football. I can run seven seconds, and I got like a little minute and a half taking a break. This is why I love hunting and golfing and fishing. Like, if you are a marathon runner, I'm not knocking you. God bless you. I will cheer you on louder than anybody from the finish line. Come on, amen. Anybody else just wait? Anybody else not a runner? Come on, you with me? Like, give me some pickleball or something. That's it. Like, let's roll. But can I tell you, you will run. And there's going to be moments where you're going to have to learn in life. No matter what age you are, you're going to have to learn to run at the pace that God has for you. There's going to be times where you don't like it. God will never make something happen to you that hurts you. But sometimes he will pull his hands away to allow something to come in your life to slow you down and to humble you up because you're trying to outpace God. You got to learn how to run. But you got to learn how to run at the pace that God has for your life. Anybody ever needed God to answer your prayers like two years ago? Come on, just wave at me, right? It's the truth. But don't get mad at God because you probably ain't ready for the answer he's trying to bring you. You will run. And you will be challenged to keep your faith. Can I tell you, I actually think we struggle with this. Not struggle, but I think it's a challenge to our walk with Jesus more than ever with the world that we live in here today. It's when culture goes right, are you going to stand on the word of God and the character of God? I'm teaching my children this left and right saying, hey, all your coaches ain't going to be saved. All your friends aren't going to be saved. Every teacher is not going to love Jesus. Every time you walk down the hallway of your school, you're going to hear some things and you're going to be challenged. Are you going to go with what culture says? Are you going to be keeping your faith in Jesus and be grounded in the character and holiness of what God's word says it's going to be? I don't know. I got it in anybody else. No matter where the world goes, we're going to stand on business and we're going to stand on the word of God and we're going to stand in the character of Jesus. You will be challenged to keep your faith. You can choose. Do you want people in this world to celebrate you? You care more about the likes or do you care about the likes of heaven? Will you? You will fight. You will run. You will be challenged to keep the faith. These three things, if you learn them, I'm going to ask you to leave here today to pray about it and to meditate on it. Ask your spouse. Ask a good friend. How well are you doing these things? Because can I tell you, determining on how you handle these three things in your life, how you fight, how you run, how you fight for your faith, will determine the legacy that you leave and how you finish. And I just, keep, I just can't stop thinking about finish well. Well done. Finish strong. Like I, I just, there's, there's a weight to it. And can I tell you, if that well done doesn't carry a weight in your spirit and in your soul, you need to check your soul. Because there's a healthy fear to the Lord. Fear is not always bad. There is a healthy fear. There is a weight that I carry on my shoulders. Just saying, hey, I want to be able to say, well done. I want the Lord to say, well done. I don't want my kids at my funeral, somebody asked them, hey, what kind of legacy do you think your father left? 
I don't want them to be like, well, my dad, he was, he was a pretty good dad. Like he, like, he loved Jesus pretty well. I mean, he was there 50% of the time. He, he kind of took us to church here and there, and it was awesome. I saw him give whenever he got a bonus, but he was never a faithful tither. Like, believe in generosity. Like, like my dad, he, he, was pretty, he was pretty good. He was there, but he wasn't there. No, can I tell you right now, this is where my faith is at. Is at the end of my life and at my funeral, if there's one thing I want people to say about Brandon Barber is he was a man who finished well. He was good and he was faithful the way he served his wife and his children, the way he served the call of God in his life. He loved Jesus well and he loved people well. He left it all on the field. Everything he's got, he gave to this world because God gave us the blessing to be here on earth. And I'm not going to take advantage of the blessing that God gave me. I'm going to use every second and every minute to tell people about Jesus. You will not be the 70%, but you will be the 30% and you can finish well. Somebody shout, I I will will finish. finish. We'll finish. The Bible talks about finishing well, and it gives us some direction. The Bible says that life is like a race, and it takes endurance. In other words, say it this way if you want to write it down. You can't finish the race until you know how to run the race. Let me say it another way. If you don't run well, you will not finish well. How many want to finish? Throw your hands. Come on, where are you at? How many want to finish well? But you will not finish unless you know how to run well. Running at the pace that God has called you to run. There's a scripture, the second one I told you to turn to in Hebrews chapter 12, that I kind of think was going to bring some context to the rest of the message that I want to preach here today. I'm taking kind of a sports route with this. Hebrews 12, verse 1 says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, and I want you to ask yourself this question that I'm about to read. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us, shout it out, what does it say? Run with endurance the race that God has set before you. You're going to run with the dream that God has in your heart. But I want to take kind of a sports analogy. I love how it says we're surrounded by a crowd of witnesses. If you didn't realize it, whether you're a sports person or not, every single one of you are playing in a game right now. And that game is called the game of life. And the Bible says you're surrounded by witnesses. So imagine you on the field right now playing and sitting in the stands of heaven are all the heroes of the Bible. People cheering you on, saying you can make it, you can finish. And so I thought sometimes to learn how to run well, you got to learn from people who already finished well. And so this is just, if you can bear with me, this is just how my, use your holy imagination. I thought if we could pull a few people from the stands of heaven to come down here and to coach us up on how to run well, we will finish well. And I just prayed about it, and there's three heroes that I want to talk about today that I think will coach us up on how to run well so we can finish well. Anybody ready for it? Can I get a yeah in the house? Come on, you ready? Number one is this. She's one of my absolute favorite heroes in the Bible. How many know the Bible is full of mighty women of God? Come on. Are there any mighty women of God in the room right now? Come on, where you at, Hope City ladies? W Collective, where you at? Let's go. Mighty women of God in the Bible. Before I give you the coaching point, we talk about Mary. I want to share with her story. Mary, the mother of Jesus. This is a story where she, just, she is now pregnant with Jesus. And everybody doesn't understand. Nobody gets the dream that God has put in her heart. And so she goes to a place to find help. It says in Luke 1, verse 39 through 45, And at that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zachariah's home, and she greeted, it's important to remember, there's her friend, Elizabeth. Everybody say Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is this child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of the Lord should come to me? I love this, verse 44. As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, The baby in my womb leaped for joy. 
Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. She will finish. She will finish. The Bible says the moment she got around Elizabeth, her spirit leaped. Here's what I think Mary would coach us up today is this. Hey, you're running this life. I know you're busy doing everything that God has called you to be, but learn from me, please. If you want to finish well, don't run alone. Don't run alone. You don't want to. Everyone needs Jesus. And can I tell you right now, everyone needs friends. We all need friends. How many need some good friends? Come on, are you with me? We need some good friends in our life. But hear me in this. Please hear me. You better, I think this is what Mary would coach us today, is that you better make sure that you have friends who have your same spirit. You don't want friends that match your opinion. You want friends that match your character. You don't want people who will build you up and boast you up. It doesn't matter the opinion. What matters is the character. That's why the Bible says in marriage and relationships, you need to be equally yoked. And I know we got Valentine's Day coming up and everybody excited and it's like, oh, it's amazing. And there's been times I've been talking to, to some young men and, some, and my wife talking to some ladies and they're like, yeah, man, I think I found the one. Like, man, he's, he's so fine. Man, she's so beautiful. Like, we finish each other's sentences. Like, I mean, we, we share each other's hobbies. We all love the same hobby. It's just so good. But we're quick to tell them just because it's good doesn't make it God. And they may share the hobby with you, but do they share your spirit and your character? There's an old saying, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Let me tell you right now, there's some people in your life you need to go ahead and learn to let go because they're holding you back from being everything that God has told you to be. But you don't need to run this alone. Sometimes you need to get rid of somebody to gain Jesus and he brings you somebody. Pick character. Pick holiness. And you watch God bring somebody your way that will run with you. Yes, you might lose some friends, but if you gain Jesus, you still gain everything. Come on, somebody shout, I, I will, will finish. finish. If you want to finish, don't run alone. And I can prove it to you in Scripture. There's a Scripture in Psalms. Psalms 119.105 says this. It says, my word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Notice it gives us two things. A lamp unto my feet. In other words, the foundation that you're standing on. And a light unto my path. In other words, the dream that you're running towards. Can I tell you, you can't look in both places. Just do it right now. Everybody just look down and look up. Look down and look up. Look up. When you're looking down, you can't see me. Imagine trying to drive like that. Imagine trying to run like that. Hear me, hear me in this. This is why you need connect groups. This is why you need AC Connect. When people tell me they come to Hope City and they can't find community, it's because you ain't trying that hard. We make it really easy for you to find community. Why? Because you need a friend that can look in the area that you can't see right now. Because you can't see both. Anybody ever have those days where you're just trying to make it through the day? Come on, just wave at me if I'm talking to anybody, right? You're like, I'm thankful I woke up, but I can't even see past tomorrow. I don't even know what next week is going to look like. I don't even know what tomorrow is going to look like. I'm just trying to stay standing. I'm just trying to love Jesus. I'm crying my eyes out. Man, I, I'm hurting right now. So this is why when you can't see where God has called you, this is why you need a brother and you need a sister in your life. Because when you're trying to stand, you got somebody speaking in your life saying, hey, don't give up on that dream that God gave you. Man, you, you still got a future. You still got a hope. Man, don't give up on God because he's never given up on you. And then you need a friend when God blesses you and you're running and you're thriving and you get a job promotion, you get a job title, and e increase is coming your way. Come on, how many believe increase is coming your way? Come on, you know what I believe? But you're running. You need that friend that, bring, that humbles you. They can speak to you saying, yeah, I love everything that you're doing, bro. But where you been at church? How come you stopped tithing? God bless you financially. It's a 10% it's a thing. It's not a stop giving. 
Why'd you stop serving? How come you're not bringing the family to church anymore? What is happening? I'm so thankful that God is blessing you and the dreams that you're doing. But while you're looking there, you need a friend speaking to you that you don't get mad at that's keeping you grounded in the word of God. Why? Because a friend wants you to finish. No matter where you are. If you don't have a friend like that, pray them in. Mary would say, don't run alone. Don't run alone. You don't want to do it. Mary goes back up into the stands of heaven. I don't want to bring a friend down. Probably not many of you saw him as a hero. But I think it's a hero because how many know it's not about how you start, but it's how you finish. And a hero in the Bible by the name of Esau. The story with Esau. His brother Jacob, their father was Isaac. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Isaac was blind in this moment of the story. And the way it was is the father would lay hands and bless the firstborn son. And he would bless and give him the blessing and the birthright. But because Isaac was blind, Jacob tricked Esau, came in, and he stole his brother's birthright, and he stole his blessing. In that moment, anger and bitterness entered Esau's heart. And he ran with it for over 20 years, bitter and angry and upset. Can I tell you, friends, anger, unforgiveness, and bitterness, it will stall your run from keeping you from reaching the finish line. I've seen it happen more and more and time and time again because we live in a broken world and people will hurt you. And angerness and bitterness and unforgiveness rises up in your heart and you're wondering why you can't finish. You're wondering why you've lost the joy. You're letting somebody else hold you up and God said, I ain't holding you up. You're holding you up. There's some things that, that just, it's hard for me to forgive. Can I tell you, it's hard for me to forgive somebody that cuts me off on the highway and gives me the finger I don't love. I just want to lose Jesus for like two minutes. Come on, am I right? It's hard for me to forgive. I drive a big truck when I'm driving through HEV parking lot and this little, little, this little Kia, this little mini Kia just slides into my spot. One time I literally put my truck in park and I left my door open. I was going to knock on the front door window right there. And I hear my wife yell from the truck, Pastor! It's a true story. I stopped, but I'm not going to lie. I did like one little knock. I just had to let them know I was there. I wasn't rocking any Hope City gear. That's all right. <laughs> it's not easy to forgive when my wife puts Splenda in the dessert. Who does that? It's not real dessert. Can I get an amen from anybody in the house? <laughs> Anger, unforgiveness, bitterness. Hebrews 12, 15 says this. I'm going to move quick. Look after each other so that none of you who fails to receive the grace of God, watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting, no, this is a many. It doesn't only affect you, but it affects your marriage. It affects your family and affects everything around you. Bitterness is like drinking poison, hoping it hurts someone else, but it really hurts you. But I want you to get this. Here's the coaching point that I think Esau would tell every single one of us is this. Esau would say, hey, if you want to finish well, you got to learn this. Learn to let it go. Learn to let it go. And his father Isaac gave him probably the best coaching point to find freedom from unforgiveness and bitterness. Genesis 27 verse 39 says this. Finally, his father Isaac said to him, to Esau, you will live, this doesn't sound too fun right here, you will live away from the riches of the earth and away from the dew of heaven above. You will live by the sword and you will serve your brother, which is not very fun. But this next phrase is powerful. Look at it on your screens. But when you decide to break free. Oh, somebody ought to shout on that. I don't know if anybody caught it. But when you decide to break free, you will shake this bitterness from your neck. You will shake this anger from your neck. 
The reason why Jesus went to the cross, it was the moment of forgiveness. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The spirit of forgiveness was born through the miracle of the cross, and Jesus decided to go there for you. So that power that was in the cross is the same power that is on the inside of you. So stop letting it beat you up. Decide today that you're going to let it go. You're going to let go of the anger. You're going to let go of the bitterness because you will finish well. Come on, can I get a shout amen in the house? Are you with me? When you decide, when you decide to let it go, and if you're still thinking about it, then it's still got control of you. If you're still talking about it, you can say, yeah, I've already let them go. I've already forgiven them. No, you're still talking about it, so you're still thinking about it. The Bible says when you have forgiven your sins, Jesus says he washes it away and he forgets about it. If God stopped thinking about it, why are you still thinking about it also? Somebody shout, let it go. Let it go. Oh, we're going to close. We're going to move quick. Here we go. Here we go. Fourth quarter, baby. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say fourth quarter, two minutes. Team's going to come and join me. We're going to make this work. Y'all just keep shouting me down, all right? You're going to get to your guac. You're going to get to H-E-B. We're going to be good. Anybody glad you came to church today? Can I get a yell? Here we go. Last thing. Last hero from heaven. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Esau. Here's the last one right here. It's my brother, Samson. My brother, Samson. Judges 16, 28 says this. Then Samson prayed to the Lord. O sovereign Lord, remember me. O God, please strengthen me. This is powerful. Just once more. Just once more. Bible talks about Samson and that he had supernatural strength. He started his life. His mother was actually barren, so God did a miracle with her. And she gave birth to this incredible hero in the Bible named Samson. The Bible said multiple times that the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, the strength of the Lord. He had supernatural strength. Now, this is just my theory. Many people think that Samson looks like the rock, like just swole. But if he did look like that, it would make sense where his strength came from. I feel like Samson, again, I can't prove this, just my, my holy imagination. I think Sam was, Samson was just a normal, like, skinny dude. Like, so skinny when you wear Under Armour, it's still loose. Come on, how many know that's skinny, right? <laughs> Y'all know somebody like that. Don't look at them. They're in the room. <laughs> they try to help by, search, by <laughs> wearing clothes from Baby Gap. You know what I'm saying? Like, it helps, but... But to me, it would make sense like, oh, that strength is from the Lord. That makes sense from the Lord. And can I tell you, I want you, I want you to get this, though. The prayer that we just read from Samson was his last prayer before he died. If you go back and you study the story of Samson and read the Bible in Judges, every time the strength of the Lord came upon him, he didn't pray for it. God just did it. And hear me, there came a point in his life where he started realizing that he can do things with his strength and still realizing that true strength comes from the Lord. And here's what Samson would say. He said, no matter where you are, there's always, there's always a moment. Don't confuse your strength and where it comes from. He made a mistake. And then after mistake, after mistake, all of a sudden, there came a moment where he experienced brokenness and depression. He tried to do it alone. He said, listen to my sister Mary. Don't do it alone. I tried it. It's not worth it. Listen to my man Esau, bitterness and anger. I fought everybody. Learn to let it go. He faced adversity after adversity. And can I tell you something about adversity? Here's what I have learned. Adversity will either break you or bless you. But you have to decide what it's going to do in your life. And in that last moment, the moment of his greatest failure, God used it to be his greatest victory. You know what that tells me about the story of Samson? Is that we serve a God of second chances. Can I get an amen on that? We serve a God not just of second chances. Come on, Hope City. How I many of we serve a God of third chances and of fourth chances and of fifth chances? And it don't matter where you are in your life. It doesn't matter what the devil is thrown at you. You can finish well. And Sam said, hey, oh, there was a moment for me. And there can be a moment for you. You can finish well. You can finish well. 
Everybody stand to your feet. Don't leave. Like I said, you got like two minutes. You got like 30 seconds on the clock. Come on. We're leaning in right here. Come on, every location, watch it online. Hear from my friends today. Cheering us on from heaven. Don't run alone. Let it go. But there's always a moment. And maybe that moment is for you right here, right now. I want every person to bow their head and close their eyes. Can I tell you right now, you can't run without a relationship. You can't run this life the way God intended you to without a relationship with Jesus. Jesus didn't die on the cross to be a part of your top three. He died to be number one in your life. And I'm asking you right now, in a moment, I'm going to count to three. If you need to give your life to Jesus or you need to rededicate your life, can I tell you right now, this is your moment. Don't miss it. You're going to be watching the Super Bowl here. You're going to be shouting like crazy. You're going to be going wild. People throwing their hands up for touchdowns and, and first down, not caring who's around them. Can I tell you right now, forget about who's around you. This is a moment between you and the Lord. You're saying, Brandon, I want to finish well. I want to be everything that God has called me to be, but I need to get my life back on track with Jesus or I need to do it for the first time. And I'm going to ask you on the count of three, not just to slide your hand up, but I'm going to ask you to throw your hand up and make a statement with heaven to say, I want to finish well. I'm going to be a man of God. I'm going to be a woman of God. I'm going to lead my life well. I'm going to lead my family well. I want to give my life to Jesus. On the count of three, hands already going up. Ready? One, two, three. Boom. Throw them up and keep them up. Come on. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Come on. Keep your hands up. Come on. I just want to see. I'm not trying to get a camera shot. Come on. Hands going up. I see over here, brother. Come on. I see you back there, man. It's all right, Hope City. You can shout. You can cheer. Come on. I see you, my friend. Proud of you, dad. So proud of you, man. Come on. More hands going up. Come on. Keep your hands up. I want to see you. I see you. Proud of you. I see you, my man in the back. Come on, Hope City. Can we shout? The Bible says when one comes to heaven, all of heaven throws a party. Can I get a yeah? Come on. Sing that it's out. Hey, hey. Every hand up, those who raise their hand to say yes to Jesus, it's real simple. Ask Jesus to come into your heart. Ask him to wash your sins clean. He'll make you new and he'll make you whole. With your hands up, nobody looking around. But if you're saying, Brandon, there's something in my knife, I need to let it go and I need a miracle. Maybe it's bitterness, maybe it's anger, maybe you need a miracle, physical miracle in your body. With your hands up, can you just wave at me with your hands? Come on, I just want to see it. Hands waving everywhere. I want to pray for you as we close out here today. Father, we thank you so much for every person that said yes to you, Jesus. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Father, heaven is rejoicing for every person who said yes to do. Father, I look at the hands out through the audience that are waving, Father. And I don't know the detail, but you know the detail of their story. And we pray right now in Jesus' name. We know that you are still a miracle-working God. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever it is that they need to let go of, Father, in Jesus' name, they let it go right now. Anger is no longer a part of them. Bitterness is no longer a part of them. Anxiety and depression is no longer a part of them. I feel this in my spirit. Suicide is no longer a part of you. You will finish well. You will finish strong. You're believing God for a miracle in your body. You're thinking you're not going to be around for your babies. And you can't 
can't finish your life, I'm telling you right now, God's going to do a miracle in your body. He's going to turn your blood work around. In Jesus' name, you will finish strong. Father, I thank you in advance for all that you're going to do for every person that is in the room, every man, every mom, every father, every wife, every child. In Jesus' name, we will run this race together and we will run it with you because we will finish in Jesus' name. If you believe in Hope City, somebody shout amen and give God praise just one more time. Come on.